tradition, all mystical tradition for thousands and thousands of years, the pivot notion is breath. Mm -hmm. So this is my question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, this so, is mm -hmm. You know, this this also our point that uh, in the West you know, breath is seen only as a very important, vital, physiological function, but that's all. But in many of the ancient cultures, the breath is something that connects us with the ex external world, the air, our body, uh, the lung, then the, the, the psyche, and spirit. So chi has, and ki in Japan yeah. have all those meanings, the same in, uh, you know, like, um, Prana, of course, uh, Ruach in the Hebrew tradition, mm -hmm. uh, Pneuma, mm -hmm. you know, those are in, in actually in Hawaii, um, Ha means uh, uh, the same, air, mm -hmm. you know, and the, the cosmic uh, creative principle, Aloha, mm -hmm. is very famous, means the presence of the living mm -hmm. spirit and the breath. Mm -hmm. And the, the opposite, haoli, which they use for foreigners mm -hmm. since the time that Cook, uh, you know, friend, uh -huh, Cook, uh -huh. uh, landed, yeah. they used the term uh, haoli for white people, which means uh, no breath. No breath, haoli. <laughs> without breath. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that, not that they don't breathe, but they don't have the. A real uh, breath. Yeah. The, the mm -hmm. Because there is also the notion in Taoist, uh, which is called um, pneuma breath, uh, jin chi, which means, I would say, ener energy desired, yeah. or just yeah. energized, because uh, jin, um, which is, means uh, at the same time sperm and uh, semen as such, and uh, basically this is a matter of sensation. Matter, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, just sublime matter of sensation. So, so, so just mm -hmm. when breath is energized, energized by mm -hmm. the spirit mm -hmm. so when you have all those phenomena in spirit mm -hmm. isn't it so so so, so just um, from this point of view you are being you know um, uh, an ear you know of all those mystic traditions and you just focused it into one you know in mm -hmm. one in one Mm, a very profound technique. So, could you uh, say several words from this point of view? What 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 you are really doing? Uh, are you specifically talking about holotropic breath work? Yes. Yeah, because you know, for me, that whole area opened when I volunteered for a psychedelic session. So, my first mm -hmm. first entry into this realm was uh, chemical. But mm -hmm. then we developed holotropic breath work. Mm -hmm. so you know, as an alternative, non-drug alternative to mm -hmm. some of the things that we experienced and, and saw mm -hmm. in, in these uh, psychedelic sessions. Mm -hmm. Which of course, again, is a sacred, sacred tradition because there are many cultures that use plants uh, for this uh, means of uh, ritual, spiritual life. Uh, the, in Mesoamerica they talk about the flesh of gods, you know, the mushrooms. And, mm -hmm. Because so, basically all substances changes your breathing, uh, changes your state of consciousness only through changing your breathing patterns. Yes. So yeah. just then, uh, you know, just uh, you know that uh, China, the usage of tea, is again changes of change of breathing, mm -hmm. and tea also yes. just uh, makes uh, really in Chinese civilization a very important point, yes. just creating a different type of breeze. Because as far as I can see, the main difference between East and West, this is attitude towards breathe, mm -hmm. towards breathe. Because uh, for, um, it's, it's been, I would say, six feeling, you know, just six sense. Uh, in Chinese tradition, uh, mm -hmm. breathe. Mm -hmm. Because breathing, which uh, unifies inner and outer worlds, and just being a measure of the spiritual balance. Mm -hmm. You know, what is interesting in the West is that, as I mentioned, the breath became just a physiological mm -hmm. function, mm -hmm. but also uh, the symptoms which are produced by faster breathing are all pathologized. Mm -hmm. So there is a, um, about maybe 10 to 15 percent of the Western population of people who start breathing faster spontaneously. Mm -hmm. It's called hyperventilation syndrome. Mm -hmm. And it is seen as a pathological process. Mm -hmm. So uh, they would get an injection of calcium, they mm -hmm. would get a Valium, they would get a, um, 
bag over the mm -hmm. mouth to increase the carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. and uh, the doctors are not happy until it's over. Mm -hmm. Whereas we do the opposite, we encourage the faster breathing, like in many of the mm -hmm. spiritual systems where you work with, mm -hmm. with breath. And I would see the hyperventilation syndrome, so-called, as a, an effort of the organism to heal itself. You see, this process mm -hmm. starts. Absolutely. But but it's misunderstood as pathology. But 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 it makes main difference between Eastern, I mean Chinese, yes. and Western medicine. You know, just as a system of knowledge, as uh, uh, ontological, you know, just and. Uh, Gnosiological uh, approach, you know, because yeah. uh, in Chinese medicines and the, in all approach to life, you know, once you encounter with some problem, this is the chance given by spirit or God or heaven for you just uh, to, to, to make yes. a progress. Yes. And uh, here you 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 you, you, you see an opposite um, effect. Once you encounter the problem, it's not that God teaching you and Allah Akbar, but it's just you should try just to, to, to mend it, just not to use the energy which is given. So, so it was, of course, it was a sort of genius decision, you know, just because. And what's your your relation with Eastern pra pra practices or, you know, cultures, just what was influence, you know? Well, I was, um, I became fascinated by um, Eastern philosophies when my mother <coughs> took me, I was about 13 years old, into a meeting with Paul Brunton. I don't know if you know. I don't know. He was a f <coughs> writer and philosopher who became like an interpreter of Eastern religions for Western mm -hmm. audiences. He spent a lot of time with Sri Ramana Maharshi and mm -hmm. Arunachala and some other masters and also um, in Egypt. So he wrote books like uh, Hermit in the Himalayas, you know, um, secret teachings behind yoga, and then about the, about the Egyptian mysteries and so on. And he had uh, disciples all over the world, and he traveled, and people met, and uh, had a little meditation, and he would give a, kind of a darshan. Mm -hmm. And so my mother became very interested in this, and she took me there as a 13-year-old, and they had Aurobindo, you know, they had Sri Ramana Maharshi, mm -hmm. they had uh, Tagore, uh, mm -hmm. Rabindada Tagore, and I was intellectually very, very interested. So uh, I sort of was devouring that uh, literature, mm -hmm. uh, but they were also meditating, and I just couldn't meditate. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was boring, too young. Too boring. Young. <laughs> yeah, boring, you know, uh, but so many, so many interesting things to do. Who wants to sit? Uh, yeah. And so it wasn't until after my psychedelic sessions where meditation became very natural. But uh -huh. before I was just too much, too much in the world. So uh, as I was studying medicine, I also took on Sanskrit for, for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Sanskrit. Uh, Sanskrit, mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that was my intellectual sort of approach. And I loved, you know, Hindu mythology mm -hmm. and Buddhist mythology. But I had complete misconception. I, I thought these people, you know, in India, they don't have um, any work, they don't have anything to do, so they sit on the Ganges and they oh, yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. make up these stories. Like it's, it's like what our novelists are doing, or mm -hmm. when you're writing a book. And then when I started having psychedelic sessions, I mean, that whole mythology came alive. I mean, I, uh, you know, encountered Shiva and Kali. I mean, it's powerful, powerful presences. I had an, a, a death rebirth experience that uh, where the the blow came from uh, from uh, you know, Shiva Bhairava, the, mm -hmm. the destructive force mm -hmm. and, and uh, I had the feeling of being totally annihilated and then sort of having this uh, this experience of um, kind of an Atma Brahman mm -hmm. experience and that just completely transformed my life. Uh, mm -hmm. When it was? This was 56. 56. I was a beginning psychiatrist mm -hmm, 56 mm -hmm. years ago. 56 uh, years ago? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I also studied a little Chinese. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was an interesting story. I read Freud. Uh -huh. And Freud was talking about the dream work. Yes. 
and there is a little footnote mm -hmm. where he uses actually Chinese uh, as um, as a parallel to the dream work uh -huh. because the dreams work with images you see and Absolutely. the pictograms are images and so I became so interested that uh, I took on Chinese in the in the Oriental Institute mm -hmm. and we had a brilliant this was like you know this is like 50 years ago mm -hmm. a brilliant teacher was Czech mm -hmm. uh, but he knew everything when we were uh, when we were sort of learning the the country uh, mm -hmm. he, knew, know. he knew all the uh, history about mm -hmm. it you know this is not just memorizing yeah but, yeah, yeah telling but stories if you, you have, know, about if images you, have, uh, you know um, uh, the east Mm -hmm. So the image is, uh, yeah. you know, the tree, and you, yeah, have, yeah, the, yeah. you have the sun, and, and the sun, sun just, climbing. Uh, yeah, 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 just uh, 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 under the top of the tree. Yeah, mm -hmm. so in, in the Chinese mythology, the sun was getting on the sky by climbing a mulberry tree. Yeah, 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 it's, it's then, on the moon, you know, just, and it's called Fu San Shu, yeah. the like, world tree, you know, just under the tree. And, yeah. you know, then you have the the image for uh, for book and then mm -hmm. you have the the bamboo mm -hmm. uh, stylus and it's yeah. the it's it's uh, the mouse you know what mm -hmm. the mouse said is written so yeah yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. we had these kinds of images so i still remember you know mm -hmm. many of the chinese mm -hmm. uh, pictograms mm -hmm. uh, the radicals and the way they are put together but he was czech mm -hmm. and you cannot speak chinese with an accent mm -hmm. because you have you have these four different yeah 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 accents. and unless you, mm -hmm. you know i mean you can butcher english you yeah. can be a french accent and you know texas accent but if you don't get it accurately in, in the chinese, chinese language nobody understands so, you so 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 nobody nobody understood me and but uh, i was able to i know it very well <laughs> i was able to write the you know mm -hmm. write the science uh, mm -hmm. so. And um, I would like to ask, you know, because my main of interest is Book of Changes. Do you have yeah. any ideas and concepts and attitudes? What well, do you think in the, about in the 60s, and, mm. in the 60s we, we sort of um, became very excited about it and we were using the arrow sticks and, uh, mm -hmm. the, you know, and, and the coins for that and we mm -hmm. were sort of doing it. When, and I became fascinated by the, it was one of the major examples of synchronicity. Mm -hmm. uh, you really get an answer, you know, that is very appropriate for the, uh, for what you are uh, mm -hmm. what you are asking. And uh, but I have not got as as deep into it as, for example, Terence McKenna, who's ah, she right, you, yeah. you know, I Terrence, know, I know yeah, Terence McKenna. Yeah. Yeah. So he was he spent much more time with the mm -hmm. teaching than I did, but uh, and um, b because uh, one of the main conception of time in China, which you know has very sophisticated calendar, you know, just and all sure. systems of prediction are based on this uh, sophisticated calendar notion and philosophy, you know, yes. which uh, gives you an opportunity to describe the world as all phases of breathing mm -hmm. at the same time. And um, Qi Qi is also being main matter of uh, time, you know, just and even weather in Chinese, it is called Tian Qi, which means heavenly um, uh, breathing. Yeah. And uh, energy of earth is called uh, Di Qi, uh, which is uh, earthly breathing, or your earthly mm -hmm. breathe. And so what's your conception of time? Well, what do you think now about time? Because uh -huh. I just, one more word, because in China, time what what's main difference it's not abstract notion it that what's imbibed you know to just integrate everything and make quality of all the life it's time mm -hmm. well the main you know main uh, notion of time you get is that linear time is just one sort of way of illusion. seeing <laughs> time's illusion uh, you can have an experience where uh, you get beyond linear mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. when everything coexists actually at the same time mm -hmm. um, but what is most interesting for me is that I see now uh, time as having a quality quality <laughs> yes. not just quantity yes. I mean yes, each, mo each moment is loaded with meaning yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the last 30 years I've been 
interested in astrology with yeah. uh, with Rick Tarnas, mm -hmm. really, and you know his I know. the cosmos and mm -hmm. psyche. So we found out that you can actually predict uh, the archetypally the content of uh, experiences in these holotropic states mm -hmm. if you use transit astrology. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, um, so in that sense, when you are born, I mean that that moment, that mm -hmm. the time is loaded with uh, with meaning. It's not like one minute is the same as another Absolutely. minute. Absolutely. Yeah. Charged. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so that was a great discovery for me personally mm -hmm. that, that time is not just something that measures you know quantitatively mm -hmm. not only figures but, yeah. not only numerals not only numbers yeah, yeah. It's a, it is a, it has a deep, deep um, uh, qualitative uh, properties and uh, Jung uh, yes of course. Uh, became mm -hmm. interested in astrology and he was comparing it to wine mm -hmm. the wine you know that uh, it grows in a, not only it's in a certain place, but at a certain time, mm -hmm. has a very specific quality that carries somehow that every that year moment. and yeah, every it, moment is different. Yeah. You know, just and it depends. So uh, here we come to the point of action meaning. You know, what mm -hmm. is an action mm -hmm. in time? Because to my mind, because yes. it's very difficult to understand all what's happening now on the planet because we lost this feeling capability to feel the quality yes. of time I mean as a very accurate feeling mm -hmm. you see the the other I had also the experience of uh, time which is very tantric where you have this tantric image of this open mouth and the present moment is being spilled out and that's mm -hmm. the only only reality mm -hmm. uh, the, the past is just a quality of the Added to the present moment, mm -hmm. so it's like the the present moment is constantly sort of uh, emerging, and the, mm -hmm. the whole history is just contained in in that moment. Uh, so I had that that experience. There's a tantric image for that. The, mm -hmm. the, the mouth kind of. And I the, see right. The, out. The, 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 the present moment, kind of filled with all of existence, is kind of you know coming coming into into manifestation something that you would be interested in um, we had um, Christ Christina and I uh, were running international transpersonal mm -hmm. conference there was the from the one that was here was a continuation yes. mm -hmm. it was in Moscow yes, yes, I know. Mm -hmm. and uh, we had one in Kyoto mm -hmm. And as we were doing it, there were some um, negotiations between American and Japanese um, businessmen. They had mm -hmm. some problems. And there was a, a Japanese man who was a Jungian, who spent some time in uh, Switzerland, mm -hmm. you know, in the Jung Institute and so on. So he was a Jungian, and he was watching them and he was laughing. He said, they think because they have a translator that they understand each other. But they don't because, um, I mean, the, the Western thinking and the Eastern thinking is based on completely different Perfect. premises. He said, you know, the, the Western idea is you, the power center is in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then you have hierarchy, and lower, higher animals, lower animals, and sort of angels. And Evolution. So <laughs> Whereas in the East, the creation emerges out of uh, the void. Mm -hmm. as a complete, um, you know, the complete creation. Wholeness, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. wholeness. And so he says it would be uh, like a Newtonian and, uh, and uh, Einsteinian so physicists yeah, talking, yeah. and they would be using terms like matter, time, energy. But uh, it would not be the same. They would have a different kind uh -huh, of concept uh -huh. behind it. So you would, he said, you would need a translator who would say, now when they say matter, this mm -hmm. is what they mean. When when this group says matter, and it's yeah. really different. You understand? I so understand this so very, very clearly. Yeah, yeah, different thinking. The, they say you have the you have the universe where the uh, the power source is in the middle. Mm -hmm. We have a universe where uh, you know it comes out of 
<laughs> everywhere. The cosmic void. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing is and it, it emerges and there might be sort of seeming hierarchies, but ultimately the worm is as important as the king. They're all integral part of the of the whole, everything sort of interconnected. And uh, and again, you know, it's just uh, mm, when I've been communicating to Jose Arguelles, you know, you know him? He says, Jose Arguelles, Arguelles. It's about Mayan factor, you know, just about the doomsday in 2012. Give me the name once more. Jose Arguelles. 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 Yeah, Jose is the one who did the harmonic... Uh, yes, yes, Convergence. Convergence. And, yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, he, was he was the friend who brought the attention to the Mayan... To Mayan uh, prophecy, prophecy yeah. which tells that this year the time should end, you know, just and uh, humanity should uh, enter into a new um, cycle, you know, just and uh, in I have great interest in it. I wrote a paper uh, about it. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, it's the same, it's actually, it's very similar because there are some um, theories, you know, just and uh, from, uh, and quite mm -hmm. evident, you know, just from China, that all this mind culture from the point of view of calendrical knowledge and uh, is um, derived from Chinese. They say that some Chinese tribes just went maybe 7000 BC, you know, just uh, into uh, America. Yeah, Joseph Campbell was actually showing, the mythologist, mm -hmm. showing some parallels between art and China and, uh, and yes, yes, Mesoamerican yes, yes, yes. art. And uh, again, the main the main similarity is uh, calendar sophisticatedness. You know, mm -hmm. it's calendar sophisticatedness. But the difference uh, that there is no any notions about the doomsday this year. You know, just in Chinese calendar, mm -hmm. uh, which is being taught, taught, taught there. But anyway, this is again about breathe. Well, when, when we say because when we say about breathe. Uh, there is some breath in which you are being a director, you know, just a manager, mm -hmm. just from your inner self. And there is a breath in which is breath in you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so what, what do you think from this point of view? Once you are getting in a holotropic session, what, uh, what entity you let to breathe through you? Well, you know, we have, um, I'm a clinical psychiatrist by training. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm I understand something different now mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what I would be called but that's where I started and so so people um, are coming with problems you know phobias depressions and so on and if you look at the, at the Western schools we have a whole range of schools and each gives you a different story about what are why? the what are the most powerful motivating forces in the psyche? Why do you have symptoms? What the symptoms mean? And then everybody comes with a different technique. You're going to mm -hmm. fix people. Now, what happens in these holotropic states? It's very different. Uh, when you get into that state, then you connect to what we call the inner healer. There is mm -hmm. a there's an inner healing intelligence that comes in, mm -hmm. and we just support what is what is mm -hmm. happening, even if at times we don't understand, mm -hmm. trust. Mm -hmm. You see yeah, that there is a, there's is a healing, healing force mm -hmm. which has greater intelligence that we can come up with on the basis of what we learned at school or mm -hmm. the books we, books, uh, we read. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's in a sense similar to what in Kundalini Yoga would be, you know, Kundalini mm -hmm. or right. uh, uh, Prana or what the Kalahari Bushmen call mm -hmm. Tum, when they do the dance and the mm -hmm. drumming and then suddenly energy comes that starts healing uh, and uh, they just sort of trust it and they cooperate with it and let it do its mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. You know, mana in the Polynesian tradition, very similar for the kahunas and so on. So the, uh, you know, the, the cosmic, uh, it's a cosmic force. It's that's beyond anything that you can offer as a as a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this energy is coming from inside. Yes. Well, from inside or from beyond, or yeah. 
but yeah, but it's in it's in inner healers. So. Yeah, yeah. It came to my mind, you know, just now, just when I'm listening to you, that it comes maybe uh, through the different quality of breath, uh, of breath as a matter. You know, just once you're breathing in a different way, you are getting access to a different, uh, different uh, layers or different, you know, j just levels of breath. I mean, atmosphere. Yeah, uh, yeah you know, we we go even farther. Because you have also, yeah, I, you have many different schools of psychotherapy, mm -hmm. but you have also many different schools what you do with your breath. Yeah. Prana, you know, pranayama, yes, 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 yes. or deep mm -hmm. yogic breathing, or from the tip of. We actually have people breathe a little faster, a little deeper than usual, tying the inhalation into exhalation. And once they get into the process, we tell them to use their own intelligence uh, to tell them how they are going to breathe we don't mm -hmm. have any we don't have any specific technique mm -hmm. so even there you you trust the inner intelligence mm -hmm. once the once the breathing starts how you are going to work with the breathing mm -hmm. it's not up to me to tell people they will sort of mm -hmm. discover it themselves and and people do it in different you know mm -hmm. different people do it in different ways Mm -hmm. B because you, you know in Chinese Qigong, uh, because Qigong is um, quite late uh, term, you know, just yeah, because basically it was uh, Taoist uh, teaching inner exercises like this, you know, Neigun, inner exercises. You exercise your inside, and uh, there they say that there is this matter of uh, sensation. I mean bodily sensation, uh, matter of breath, and uh, matter of spirit or consciousness. And so what you do, you first begin to exercise the matter of sensation or matter of your body, sublime it into a breath. Then you mm -hmm. begin to exercise your matter of breath, subliming it, you know, reworking it mm -hmm. into a matter of spirit. Our consciousness. Then you begin to exercise the matter of spirits, and all this through breathing process. All this different type of breathing, mm -hmm. deep, just all of them. Then you are exercising a matter of spirit, uh, sublime it into void, shunyata. Mm -hmm. Then you exercise the matter of void, just uniting with the weight. Mm -hmm. It's five stages. It's been classic, mm -hmm. you know. So, so just and from this point of view, it, it comes to my mind that once you develop your practices, of course, you should use many different type of breathing because, as far as I can feel, at least, uh, mm -hmm. once you are able, mm -hmm. which is quite difficult for Western orientated body, you know, mm -hmm. to just to breathe constantly, slowly for quite long period of time, just slowing down. You again must have very different experiences. Mm -hmm. What do you think about yeah, well, You know, this, uh, each of those uh, techniques have their effects. I mean, you have mm -hmm. the Taoist... Uh, any, any breathing has yeah. an effect. Um, you have the breathe, one of the type of the breathings where you actually get the feather. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to breathe so that it doesn't... Not move doesn't move it's like more like getting it with osmosis uh, or the Essenes as were saying uh, you breathe and you focus on the space between the inhalation and the exhalation yeah, 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 yeah. there is the entry mm -hmm. into the transcendental and, and you certainly can get you know um, results with pranayama the forceful breathing and uh, um, but we found out that that people can get powerful eff effects without having any specific instructions, that they just get the guidance mm -hmm. from within. And the different people at different times will will work with the breath differently, you know. And so basically... And, mm -hmm. Yeah, and we don't, we don't sort of, we don't coach people, we don't say, mm -hmm. now you breathe this way or that way. And it's very humbling also because uh, powerful things happen sometimes where we are not even looking. We just walk around and uh, suddenly somebody goes through some powerful transformation. To, uh, very different from a situation where you think you are the healer, you are the doer, mm -hmm. and you take all the credit and, and of course all the blame then mm -hmm. if it doesn't work. 
there's a lot of this in in Arab philosophy. There's a lot of uh, emphasis on the on the inner healer. Mm -hmm. They were doing it, you know, in temple temple uh, incubation in in Greece. Mm -hmm. where uh, there was a temple of Apollo mm -hmm. and they would spend the night there and then they get dream mm -hmm. that would actually they either get healed in the dream or they would get some kind of idea as to what they should be doing and the uh, therapeutes, the original name, the therapist yeah. was not the doer who you, you, yeah, 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 fix yeah. you it's somebody who is an assistant who intelligently assists in the healing process, but the healing process is coming from the deities. It's not clear. Fair. Yeah. And um, what would you say three main values of human life? No. Mm. <laughs> what is for you three or just five, just which is our main values? Just. Well, you, I would say um, you know, love of creation, mm -hmm. certainly, a sense of um, uh, connectedness, a sense of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. being connected with other people, being connected with nature, being connected with the uh, mm -hmm. cosmos, uh, uh, certainly respect for life. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I would give uh, you know, sense of adventure, mm -hmm. being incarnate, being uh, part mm -hmm. of this phenomenal sort of, uh, mm -hmm. fact of existence. Um, uh, and then, uh, <coughs> you know, the some, anything that you do against uh, against avidya, that uh, just pursue the prajnaparamita. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, not living just sort of in the material world, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And <coughs> being involved in some kind of mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. process of mm -hmm. self-discovery that leads to the, the Prajna Paramita, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. discovering who you are, what, mm -hmm. what it is about. And, uh, Do, what's your relation to religion? <coughs> well, um, the transpersonal psychology is really an effort to bring together spirituality and uh, science. Mm -hmm. We are not that interested in uh, uh, religions. Uh, this is more like history, you know. Uh, um, the, the sort of respect for the spiritual dimension as a vital dimension dimension of the psyche, of the universal scheme of things, respect for people who pursue that, but um, I wouldn't have any commitment whether the, the path that they choose is Christian or Muslim, you know, Sufi or, uh, uh, you know, shamanic mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, I see those as just various uh, different ways to the same. But I think the problem begins when uh, you have a group of people who start relating to the archetypes of a particular mm -hmm. uh, religion. Joseph Campbell said, a useful deity has to be transparent for the transcendent. Mm -hmm. You see it as something that's pointing to the absolute, to the source out of which everything comes, but you don't make it opaque and you worship the image. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because then what happens, and that's, that's where organized religions come, then you can have a situation where uh, you have people who worship in a particular way, you know, part, in a particular kind of images, but automatically set that group against another one. Mm -hmm. and then you have the, we are Christians mm -hmm. and you are pagans, you are all pagans. Yeah. Uh, and we are going to convert you to our belief mm -hmm. or there's no place for you. You know, we are Muslims, you are infidels, we are Jews, you are goyim. So those, uh, that becomes a very dangerous phenomenon, something that contributes to the problems we have. Mm -hmm. Or even differences within the same religion mm -hmm. are enough to kill. Mm -hmm. uh, Protestants, Catholics, uh, you know, Sunnis, yeah. Shiites. So, um, 
I have respect for a religion that honors uh, direct experience, mm -hmm. not, not a religion where they invite you and then somebody is going to be telling you about experiences that other people had. Mm -hmm. I believe in a religion that would create a context for you and give mm -hmm. you means for mm -hmm. you to have personal experiences. Like Buddha said, don't believe anything that I say until your personal experience confirms that. Mm -hmm. So religion for me is something that should bind together, religare. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately many of the organized religions, although they came from spiritual sources, the founders mm -hmm. had spiritual experiences, the, you know, the, the apostles mm -hmm. or the, the, the prophets and so mm -hmm. on, but very frequently when the religion becomes organized, that spiritual element tends to disappear and they become concerned about uh, you know money property uh, secular mm -hmm. power and so on and uh, they can completely lose the the connection mm -hmm. they become concerned about things that are trivial like in the, the christian religion you know problems with you. like in a, in a world which is overpopulated where we mm -hmm. have where we have aids epidemics they are concerned about people not using contraception, you know. Mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. or, uh, when once you get into those kinds of things, I don't have a lot of respect for those religions. I see. Yeah, yeah I, have, I have respect for people who did some kind of inner, you know, deep inner exploration and they, whatever they believe is, is really confirmed by their own experience, not just some dogma that, that uh, somebody is presenting. For example, in Christianity, for the first 400 years, there was a concept of reincarnation. Mm -hmm, and then, mm -hmm. then there was a council in Constantinople, which was a, against Father Oregon political thing, and, and, and they say, you, you, you know, um, I mean, if you believe in this uh, terrible uh, doctrine of uh, return of the of the soul, you mm -hmm. know, your anathema, or the, your band out uh -huh. of uh, Well, you know, but the existence of past life experience is very, very powerful. We see it all the time in, mm -hmm. in many different uh, you know, religions and spiritual systems really incorporated it. Uh, and um, I had, you know, many powerful experiences of uh, reincarnation. So, mm -hmm. so if, if I have a religion that tells me uh, it's nothing like reincarnation, I have a different, I have a different perspective because of my of my personal experience. So we are interested in spirituality, really, mm -hmm. in spiritual experiences. There's nothing unscientific. Mm -hmm. in studying these mm -hmm. holotropic states and mm -hmm. uh, the phenomenology, the impact which they have on human mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. uh, and th there's no conflict. Mm -hmm. You see, in my opinion, religion does not compete for the same territory with science. Mm -hmm. Heaven in uh, religion is not the astronomical heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is uh, uh, something that you experienced in a, in an ordinary state. Mm -hmm. The same hell is not something that that you would be looking uh, for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and there hell, is hell is a state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are interested in in uh, spiritual experiences. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, and if you have spiritual experiences, you you might understand where religions are coming from, but you also might understand where they went astray. All right, like mm -hmm. you know, where they led you, like the original, the original message of mm -hmm. uh, of Jesus was very different to what happened with Christianity, the Absolutely. Inquisition and the Crusades, and uh, what you see in the United States, the fundamentalists, and so on. All those stories so, which exist now. So, um, you know, there are. I, I'm interested in religions to the extent to which they are really close to. Uh, the kind of original message that's mm -hmm. based on, on real personal mm -hmm. personal experience. When you get all the attritions, uh, everything that happened historically, all the distortions, you mm -hmm. know, that, 
uh, that involve battles, and uh, I'm just not particularly interested. This is the I see right. This is history. This for me is not very spiritual. interesting, very similar approach. And just m maybe my last question: What do you think about the future wave ways of uh, human being development? You know, just or where it goes, just and where it will be, whether it will be a spiritual way of life or technological just like all oh, it would be the mixture what's gonna be a transition which you previsage which you perceive you know just what um, real radical changes can happen in uh, our history you know I don't know uh, I mean um, I so have I have experienced um, alternatives uh, there is one that's what, what I'm absolutely sure about is that we are on a fundamental intersection now, mm -hmm. when is the question whether our species will move to another level of course mm -hmm. to almost becoming a different species mm -hmm. uh, getting over the violence and the greed that was shaping mm -hmm. or we might exterminate ourselves I and mean, we might destroy ourselves we might destroy the you know many other species mm -hmm. with us so I think it's a critical period and in that sense I'm interested in the in the fact that the Mayan calendar mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is ending, you know, in, in yeah, 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 end of time. Uh, although I believe that what was meant was uh, hopefully um, end of an era, which mm -hmm. governed by greed and uh, mm -hmm. violence and so on, and moving to another age rather than end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Apocalypse also is the revelation. Mm -hmm. the certain secret things are revealed to, mm -hmm. to people. So I believe that we are on this really important, uh, mm -hmm. critical crossroads now, mm -hmm. and you can you can see both of the scenarios uh, unfolding. Mm -hmm. We are destroying the planet. I mean, the, the, what happened in the in the Gulf, Mexican Gulf, the spills and all that, mm -hmm. and, and the, the nuclear accidents and so on. So uh, that, and I also see number of people awakening, you see, mm -hmm. and becoming like a different species. I mean, mm -hmm. I've seen many people who have done significant work on themselves. They would like to be called global citizens, not mm -hmm. Americans or Czechs or, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, this, is, I understand, this is like I understand. Buck, Buckminster Fuller talks about, mm -hmm. this being planet, I mean, uh, being a, a spaceship, mm -hmm. Earth. Um, the people who have done this kind of significant work, they don't see violence as an acceptable form of uh, solving problems. Mm -hmm. They see that our f high priority should be protection of life mm -hmm. and protection of environment for life. Mm -hmm. We are biological creatures mm -hmm. and our primary concern is clean water, clean mm -hmm. air, clean earth, which is feeding us. It's suicidal, you know, to do things that, that w it creates an environment that's hostile to, mm -hmm. to life. So that's, that's one aspect that I really, uh, I'm, I'm convinced that we mm -hmm. are in some kind of a critical situation that we change into something else mm -hmm. and we, we are <laughs> really going to have trouble, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, there are in the spiritual world, there are scenarios, and I, I had glimpses of uh, both of them, or a window, the, the idea that the, the spiritual will sort of come mm -hmm. into the world and everything gets spiritualized, mm -hmm. the material world gets spiritualized. But you have also in the Hindu mythology, you have the concept of uh, yugas. Yugas, yeah. And the, you know, the universe is created and it's building up and then goes Collapses. to a really, really bad end and, and collapses and then another, you know, another creation. Uh, happens um, and you know both you find in, in sophisticated uh, uh, spiritual literature both possibilities so um, I believe that you know the universe is ultimately uh, Leela it's a divine mm -hmm. play and uh, play is very a, important notion yeah and it's uh, I think it's ultimately impossible to reach certainty this is how mm -hmm. things are you know because there always can be some phenomenal surprise. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to translate Russian word "igra," "igra," because it's not equal to play. How it's in Czech? 
Kosmická hra. Hra, hra. Hra. Yeah, in, I, I, think, in, in, uh, I, I think this notion in Slavic language is deeper than um, Anglo-Saxon, you know, play or game, just play game fun. You, you have uh, several notions which really full, uh, give you a full description of this gra. Ra, ra. Yeah, game game is more like something that has rules, like football and stuff, the game. Mm -hmm. uh, play is more like you, you entertain yourself mm -hmm. and be closer to the Leela, I think, mm -hmm. cosmic play rather than cosmic game. Because in Russian, you know, it, it was when they uh, sing a song, they играть песню. Играть, играть. Играть песню, играть танец, пляску. And it's different, so it's just I'm always in a little bit of difficulty just uh, trying to find the translation of no. the Russian word "igra" because I, I consider it very, very crucial notion, you know, just yeah. which only one can change the world. Yeah, you know, people who do this kind of uh, work with psychedelics, with the breath work, and so on, they have great difficulties. Uh, describing what happened. I mean, it's ineff many of those experiences are ineffable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but even sort of describing certain experiences that they had, and those that are sophisticated frequently go to to languages um, uh, of cultures that had sophistication in terms of self-exploration. I don't, ha I don't have the term in Chinese. The Chinese, it's not enough. I see that Slavic is good. Igra, Igra is very good. It's very good. It's perfect, you know. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, but all those, you know, just which I know, just I don't know which is in Sanskrit, you know, Lila. And it means maybe Lila. Uh, but, but yeah, they, mm -hmm. some some of these people use actually the the terms from Sanskrit or from mm -hmm. Japanese, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, Samadhi and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Kensho and mm -hmm. Satori and Maya mm -hmm. and Lila. And you have you have sort of nuances in Sanskrit. You have uh, Nirvikalpa Samadhi, mm -hmm, Samakalpa mm -hmm. Samadhi. Mm -hmm, you, know, mm -hmm. you see the divine in certain form or mm -hmm. without form, and mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, all those things are a very specific meaning. Whereas mm -hmm. when we use terms like it's a cosmic illusion or something, uh, it doesn't quite capture it. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it means yeah, 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 absolutely. They have specific uh, because terminology. Because in Slavic, you know, ra at the same time means false and truth mm -hmm. at the same time. It's a mixture, you know, yeah. just when you use false and uh, true, you know, just put it together yes. and just manipulate in yes. uh, those two parts of this uh, mm -hmm. universe. So what do you think? What is going to happen with the to, to humanity? humanity yeah. I'm just a little bit um, haunted with the idea that I should play some game here, you know, just, just it may happen anything. For me the question is, what do I want? What do yes. I want with humanity to happen? And so yes, just because much I've, been studying, I've been studying a lot of Chinese medicine, I mean, again, uh, a notional structure of Chinese medicine, how you know the body is Yes. heal and how you heal and what how you should think what yes. mental pro what spiritual process must be in you so just i can see that this outer body of the world which is quite diseased you know mm -hmm. just at the moment but at the same time and at the beginning of our conversation we said that disease only give you a cues you know mm -hmm. just where to go yes. so just now i am very much concentrated in order to understand the whole diagnosis Yes. Or of the story which we call humanity in the universe. And so just I myself, you know, just I make my uh, research mostly in Chinese uh, whole body of knowledge in order to translate it into this okay, yeah. Western, which has been basically uh, uh, Aramic, you know, just, just from Abrahamic, Abrahamic religions coming, you know, here, yes. because we are being the mixture of all those, you know, yes. Just, yes. as a text uh, representation. So just I'm now trying with all my effort just to put this Chinese way of mm -hmm. uh, seeing what is 
disease water pathology, you know, how you cure it, you know, mm -hmm. just on the basis of knowledge. So I say it does not matter what's going to be. From the point of view of Chinese cyclistic science, there, um, uh, the big cycle is 26 million, uh, 690 thousand, 40 years, and we are now just somewhere in the first part, it's 10 million, uh, 155 thousand, 27 years from the beginning. So we have plenty of time yet for playing mm -hmm. games, you know, to just... Yeah. <laughs> so. But you know, my own my own approach is um, I know what I would like the world to be, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, trying to do what we can within our own yes. range. I believe that when people go through this transformation, that they are bec becoming better people. That, uh, we have a better chance for survival, and I want to you know make my own contribution to that. Uh, uh, they, they once uh, asked Ramdas, you know, about mm -hmm. this, and he said, uh, you know, there are possibilities that uh, we're kind of going to get through that crisis to another level. Is a possibility this is the end of this industrial civilization. Mm -hmm. We would not be the first mm -hmm. civilization to to go end on the ground, <laughs> and they didn't have the powerful means that we have to destroy themselves. He says, but I wouldn't do anything uh, else, you know, mm -hmm. when I do some, some uh, deep inner work, uh, I believe that it will lead to um, the best possible contribution that I can do for, yes. for a good future. Uh, if this is the end, then the same the inner work mm -hmm. makes uh, gives me a better chance to tolerate mm -hmm. what's going to happen. I will be better prepared for the ending. Mm -hmm. And I'm again from the point of view of Chinese medicine, when you consider the whole body as a very, a very intricate, very sophisticated system, such as which is existing not only in space and matter, but also in time. And you should know a proper time for exertion your influence, and a very, very proper place, which must be interrelated with all the other parts, mm -hmm. and you should know this structure. So my approach to this world is just try my best in order to get this knowledge because when you say about you know just a magic doctor of the past times you know just he sees mm -hmm. uh, the diseased person and he knows the only one perfect proper place time and way of exertion to influence in order to begin this healing process Mm -hmm. So, and my feeling that anybody who is able uh, to take responsibility on yourself of mm -hmm. trying to find this knowledge just will take it. And um, I sure. say that not, it's not necessarily me, but, but I, at least I have chances. I have this also, I have this vision. I know just about the existence of those classic uh, texts which really contain uh, mm -hmm. highest level knowledge as book of changes, you know, just mm -hmm. which has been in the basis of all sciences of China. All sciences. Well, what I know about you, what Vladimir told me, mm -hmm. you have certainly done, you know, amazing, amazing uh, things. You have done major, major contribution to this, what we are talking about. I'm trying. I'm yeah. still trying all yeah. the same time. Trying, you know, just, just making some let's try a magazine or let's try a cinema. So just if we finish basically, you know, just... just yeah, we will have mm -hmm. to go. Okay, yes, absolutely. Explain. Thank you very I much. I wanted to... Can, yeah, it was wonderful mm -hmm. to talk to you. I, I, I just, maybe I give you my references just and maybe anyway. Uh, I, I suppose I, I always avoided to go to China, uh, to, to the United States. Just, but now, just at last, I've made visa. So oh, just, if you if you I come to California, to, let us know. I'll go to California. It's just Silicon Valley, and I'm in, uh, invited to Deepak Chopra's spirituality and oh, science you are. Oh, great. in the August. You oh, know, great. just to be a speaker, Thank maybe. You so, much. Yeah. so So just I'll yeah. be there. Just, just I feel that I ha really have a connection with California. Just and I just and oh, there. you should visit Esalen. So I, I will visit. visit. I will do. I will do because I'm yeah. also very much interested at the same time with um, uh, Gregory Bateson work. Yeah, I spent two and a half years with Gregory at, ah, es at Esalen. Yeah, I it's very interesting. It's yeah. very interesting, and I, I and I feel that what I want to do, you know, just to use all this Chinese stuff, knowledge, in order to make a parallel, a parallel um, uh, project uh, which will be parallel and asymmetric towards cybernetic. Yeah, just to put in a huge dimension.
Mm -hmm. Because the problem of all the psychology, there is no, what you say, quality of time in it. Yeah. I mean, very expressed with numerals. You know, uh, the, uh, um, related to it, uh, Marie-Louise von Franz, who was a yeah. uh, young uh, mm -hmm. student, she wrote a book about numbers, mm -hmm. where numbers themselves have deep meaning one two three absolutely she's going to four and this was if you have a chance to look at the book I, I, I'll, I'll see amazing well, well I'll see but she puts quality to numbers and at the same time because I've, I've really I've made uh, really not so little research in all these Chinese prediction techniques which are very very intricate and sophisticated yeah. well what where you have the main the, the two main um, parts is uh, symbols and numbers, or images and numbers, yeah. you know, just two main parts for basically. And so, so just I also just have written a lot about it, you know. Just you I know, know, we need we really need at this time the, all the ancient knowledge, and we need uh, what I would call cultural brokers like you, Absolutely. people who know both and cultures. To, to make and make to make an adequate, unseen translation into the system yes. of values, just to, to infuse it, you know, just to inject it, just not only through plays, through games, through gra. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much, then, Sergei. Thank I will you. Keep so you just, real, it was so pleasure. real great yeah. pleasure to just stand and keep in touch, and I'll be for sure just in the nearest future. Okay. So, so just thank please, you very please much. Please come see us in California. Uh, How shall I, I, I find you there? Since you are an expert in Chinese, yes. can I ask you a question? Because it's such a spiritual system, uh, mm -hmm. I was surprised that the image, the pictogram for me, I, uh -huh. is a hand holding the hel what we call the halberd uh -huh. weapon. This is uh, me, I. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just how do you? Is there another term for yes. I that's spiritual? Yes, yes, yes. This is five, five, mm -hmm. and. A picture, mouth, mouth you know, yeah, yeah. just uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Five being the center, center conscious outlet of yourself. This is f for high level, yeah. different. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this one first with this. Uh, That's the same in that I mentioned in book. When you write book, you have the mouth there. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. But but uh, you know this wu and this wo. Bo. This one is Wu. And the uh, enlightenment, when you add heart to it. Okay. This is enlightenment. Yeah. This was always a kind of puzzle for me. Why would I be defined? And there are much more, you know, just, just much more. And all those, because, because old Chinese psychology is a very, very interesting type, because there is a very sophisticated description, because you have a medicine sophisticated medicine which is spiritual medicine because it's created by yellow emperor uh, who was the founder of Taoism. Yeah. The, the main treatise yeah. is yellow emperor treatise. I've been translated a bit, you know, just as this would be a whole other a whole other discussion, yes. you know, but same for Branislav. Oh. How are we doing? Yeah in time. Perfect in time. Mm -hmm. We have to go up and close the yeah. bags and yeah. look, make sure that...